Hello learners, welcome to the studio of NIOS. Today we continue in this video with lesson 2 Childhood in India and our topic is different social contexts and how children grow. This topic about childhood in India will discuss the relation between social situations and influences of social context that is where they live, who are the people who are their neighbours and what are the occupations that they see, what are the festivities they see. The child's natural tendencies are inherited that is children have certain things that they get from their parents such as physical features, uh, the colour of their eyes, colour of their hair. As educators we need to be aware of the differences and build among children an awareness of difference. Where children live, the neighbouring uh, people, the neighbourhood, education of the family, family configuration, daily rhythms, healthcare, nutrition, health services all influence children's development. It is very important as to what they eat, what do they see in their neighbourhood, uh, what kind of family it is, not only what family believes but also how many people in the family. What kind of people? What are the family members doing? Socioeconomic status, that means how much uh, income is there? How many people in the family are working? Uh, like, this is Kavita, you remember Kavita? Her parents are doctors. This is Tanya, she is visiting uh, Kavita. Her parents are uh, working as engineers. And this is Kavita, her parents, mother is a school teacher and father is a doctor. And they all discuss different things. Now, another thing that is very important is geographic location. If you are living in the um, forest, near the forest, you learn different kinds of skills. If you are living in a city, you, uh, you come to know about different kinds of things. You, uh, you may not know so many birds as a child growing up in a village. So geographic location also uh, becomes a very important influence on children's growth. It also becomes important because if you are living in interiors, you may not have that kind of access to he healthcare services. You might have to, sometimes you have to go 3 kilometers uh, to meet a doctor. Sometimes uh, the medicines are not available so easily. And that is why people have their own systems of healthcare also. Now, in a city, if you are living in a very congested area, then you may not get enough water. So, you are not able to keep your surroundings clean. So, it influences your hygiene, personal as well as uh, of the neighbourhood, as well as the conditions for sanitation. Now, other things that go and which influence childhood are immunization and mother's health. We will talk about all this. One of the very important things to uh, understand all the different influences is that children see and they learn what they see. They learn about things what they hear. So the environment is very important. Uh, here, uh, children are keen observers and watch their environment. In one of the slums in Delhi, one mother shared one story with me and said that our colony is very famous for, um, you know, violence. So this mother told me that I keep talking to my children to find out what they have seen because sometimes what they hear and if they can't make meaning out of it then it leaves certain questions in children's minds. So there is awareness among parents and as educators you also have to talk to children, give them opportunity to draw, to, uh, to find out what they are thinking, what they are doing and uh, do they have any fears? Did they have any experiences which were not really um, uh, good for them and they couldn't make a, a meaning out of it. Now, let's look at some other factors, which is family con configuration. Sometimes families are joint families, sometimes families are nuclear families. Children may have to go out and live with, uh, um, you know, other people because there's nobody at home. Children may have to go to a healthcare centre, children may have to go to a daycare centre to understand uh, that they have to understand that, you know, parents have gone to work and they need to be um, cared for by others. Therefore, we are very keen that 
students learn about what children like, what um, they hear and understanding childhood needs besides only being worried about literacy, it's very important to deal with the social emotional aspects of childhood. Uh, you know, sometimes children are not able to be fully functional. They may get teased. Children may get teased for various reasons. Supposing the father has gone away and has not come back or the mother is not there. So children tease other children also. They get labeled if they are, uh, you know, short or they can't run very fast. So we have to be sure that there are different kinds of influences on children and they need to be addressed. Children must get opportunity to be able to describe what they feel, describe what they see. So it's very important for children to have a positive self-worth. They must have uh, recognition of their differences, of their, uh, you know, specific situation. What is unique about where they come from? And they must, uh, all children must be able to respect differences. And by this kind of sensitivity, we are building an understanding of plurality and coexistence. All children may not have the same kind of access. Children must know that each and every family can have a lot of abundance of things. They can also have deficits. And sensitizing uh, you know, each child to the differences. They may, might celebrate different kinds of festivals. They might eat different kinds of food. So there's some little intervention in a joyful manner. You know, see what he has brought in lunch today. See Tanya's food. She's eating a sandwich. Oh, and Kavita, what are you eating? I am eating a paratha. So people eat different kinds of food. People celebrate different kinds of, um, you know, festivals. So all this makes children respect differences and appreciate differences. And they understand plurality and the value of coexistence. Thank you.